I believe that Bitcoin Cash is the version of Bitcoin, the project and the movement that, at this time, stands the greatest chance of being able to eventually bring the vision of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash to the entire world. It's why I build on the network. It's why I participate in the community. There is a conflict brewing in the Bitcoin Cash community. And a conflict that affects the community, if it gets too far gone, has been shown to affect the network. Bitcoin Cash is a project that was born out of conflict, born from a fork with BTC. We experienced another conflict that built over last year and eventually culminated in a hash war and yet another split with BCH and BSV emerging from that conflict. It's hard to know just how far the current conflict has already gone. Certainly, it's plain to me at this point how the sides are matching up and who the belligerents will be. As each conflict is different, it's hard to know exactly the course that this one will take. But since we're dealing with Bitcoin and since we're dealing with Bitcoin Cash, there's always the chance that this will end in another splitting of the community. I don't know if that can be prevented. I don't know if it should be prevented. But I do have some understanding, some things that I have learned over the years that I wanted to share so that at the very least, you could decide for yourself what you wanted to do. I'm going to try in this presentation not to give my own personal opinions. I'm going to try to just explore the knowledge that I have that is informing me about what may be on the horizon. In the spring of 2016, I did a video series called The Ascendant Project. And in it, I laid out a cognitive framework that I came across years ago that has proven to me to be very, very effective at explaining and describing the path of history, but also of giving some tools for predicting what is to come. You can go and find out more by watching The Ascendant Project, but I wanted to share one piece with you here that's helpful for understanding the conflict that is approaching. And this is a concept called the human social cycle. I first heard about it in the work of a guru, an Indian guru known as P.R. Sarkar. His followers called him Sri Sri Anandamurti, and it was one of those followers who happened to be a early business mentor of mine who introduced me to P.R. Sarkar's books and recordings and also introduced me to the organization that he founded in the 50s called Ananda Marga, which is the Path of Bliss. Uh, by the 70s, Ananda Marga had spread worldwide, and you can still find Ananda Marga centers probably in the city that you're in right now. Primarily, they do a form of meditation and yoga. I was initiated into the practice myself, and I've actually found it to be quite useful so the idea of the human social cycle, as described by P.R. Sarkar, is based on the concept of the Varnas, which is the Hindu caste system. Now, within the Hindu caste system, you have four basic classes. You have the peasant or common people, which are called Shudra. You have the warrior class, which is Kshatriya. You have the thinker and priest class, which is called Brahman in the Varna system. Uh, P.R. Sakar uses the term Vipra. And then you have the merchant class, which is Vaishya. Now, how Sarkar describes it is that these four classes are representative of energies. They're representative of more than just the classes, but energies that exist in people and energies that exist in societies. And he wasn't the first one, certainly, to discuss this or to discuss the sort of occult properties that are contained within these ideas. In fact, you're probably more familiar with this than you know, because, of course, these four classes or these four varnas are the four suits in tarot, as in tarot cards, which 
has also been translated into playing cards, which of course are still used for both magical divination, illusion, and games of chance. So they're used as markers of fate. And so what do you have? You have the peasant class, Shudra. In tarot, the suit is wands. And in the playing card, the suit is clubs. The weapons of the peasant are clubs. Warrior, the warrior or kshatriya class. In the tarot, it's the suit that is swords. And in playing cards, it's the suit of spades, which is taken from the Spanish word for sword, espada. Then the priest and thinker class, the weapons of the priest class, is the suit in tarot cups, the chalice that holds the blood of Christ, which translated into playing cards is hearts, which obviously pumps blood and is the color of blood. And then the merchant class, their weapon in the tarot is pentacles, which is represented as a coin with a star on it. And that translates over very nicely into playing cards as diamonds. So there you have it. Clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds is Shudra, Kshatriya, Vipra, and Vaisha. So Carr, he presents the idea that these four energies are constantly at play in any human society. And that the dominant energy changes over time based on a pattern among the common people, the Shudra. Certain individuals arise who happen to be stronger and braver than the average individual. And these people are the warriors or the heroes, the Kshatriyas. And when Kshatriyas are acting nobly, they become the heroes of the people and they're placed as the chief or the king. And then the king, in order to rule properly, gathers around him the smartest people he can find, the thinkers, the vipras, and they advise him. Now, over generations, as the lineage of the king gets corrupted, noble thinkers form ruling groups and they overthrow the corrupt monarchy. But then eventually the rule of the thinkers, which is represented as a church, becomes greedy and corrupt. And those with the wealth, the vaishyas, the merchants, are able to wield the true power. Now, at first, like in the other cases, these merchants, they're noble and wise, but eventually they too become corrupt and their power is overthrown by the common people and the cycle starts all over again. And this is a beautiful way of looking at history. And when you see history in this vein, it's so self-evident and it just lays itself right out in front of you. But it's not just history on a grand scale. Small cycles happen inside of the larger cycles. And it's also important, Sarkar says, to realize that all of the energies are present within every society at all times. And all of the energies are present in some way inside of each individual. And these energies are simply waiting their turn on this eternal wheel of fate and of fortune before they rise in the exact order that has been prescribed. Bitcoin Cash began life at the fork as a, a grassroots Shudra movement, a movement of the people. And then as time went on, within that movement of the people arose these certain Kshatriya warrior heroes. And the Hash War was a classic warrior event. It was a Kshatriyan event. And so what that means is that we can see what era we're in. And it means that the Vipra energy, that thinker priest energy, is waiting in the wings to take its place. Now, the difference with Vipra governance is that it tends to be by committee as opposed to the sole dictatorial rule of the king, the Roman Senate, the Catholic College of Cardinals, the Royal Society, 
the parliamentary bodies and national academies of science of modern nations, they're all manifestations of Vipra energy. So, at the height of the Kshatriyan age, the warrior age, these Vipran organizations, they're invaluable advisors to the wise sovereign. And if the kingship becomes corrupt, it's for them to take power. In history, we've seen examples of the Kshatriyan age giving way to the Vipra age in response to the corruption of the monarchy. The American Revolution and the Indian Independence Movement, both movements of great thinkers against the abuses of the British crown, are illustrations of painful but ultimately benign shifts from one age to the other. The Vipra thinkers at the heads of those movements, Jefferson and Franklin, Gandhi and Nehru, have been seen by history as noble individuals. On the other hand, the French Revolution, and let's not forget that the King of France was instrumental in helping Washington's Continental Army win independence in the American Revolution, and the Russian Revolution, were examples of a twisted and malignant turn of the wheel. In both of those cases, the leaders of the Vipras, Lenin and his Bolsheviks, Robespierre and the Paris Commune, are seen as corrupt villains who brought shame and suffering to their countries that lasted for decades after they had personally met their end. The corruption of Robespierre gave birth to Napoleon. The corruption of Lenin gave birth to Stalin, both of which were far worse for their nations than the King of France or the Tsar of Russia who had been overthrown. So keep in mind, the energies are always on the move. And the specifics change based on time, place, and person, but the nature of the cycle does not. History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And now it's up to you to decide if the time is right for a shift. But how can you know if the time is right for a shift? Well, if the king is wise, if his decisions are principled, even if you personally have different preferences, then any Vipra seeking to dethrone him is most likely corrupt and malignant, motivated by ego. What their action will give rise to is far worse than the wise king could ever be. However, if the king is corrupt and capricious, if his decisions are based on personal whim and not principle, then the Vipra group seeking to remove his influence is most likely benign. How and when this shift occurs will be determined by the level of consciousness within our community. Simply being able to see the shift as it approaches changes its very nature. Understanding your role in the drama changes it even further. If the consciousness of the community at this time is too low, the shift will come prematurely and give birth to something monstrous. If the overall consciousness is high enough, the shift will come at the right time and give birth to a better tomorrow. The choice of whether or not to open our eyes and play a role in the coming change is completely our own.